So if you think about the mechanical behavior of a ceramic, <clears throat> you think about and how you might describe that. I think that many people would would associate this word brittle with ceramics. Uh, you don't expect them to bend permanently. And you know, you take a piece of chalk and you bend it in your hands and it it, it snaps, right? And you, know, you certainly wouldn't expect so yes, that, that does happen. Um, you take a piece of chalk and you bend it in your hands and it does something like that, uh, you'd, be, uh, you'd be concerned. Uh, that's, that's not what you'd expect to happen, right? Unless you're in the matrix or something. Anyway, so um, ceramic materials, you have a sense that they, they, they should not plastically deform. So there's, there's no plastic deformation. And we could, in fact, illustrate that on a stress strain curve so stress versus strain for a ceramic material and a ceramic material would typically have a linear elastic region and then it would fracture so there's the point of fracture but you'll notice there was no plastic deformation we can still define the slope here as the Young's modulus there was no plastic deformation <clears throat> Um, but there's a little bit more that we need to discuss about uh, about ceramics. I mean, that, that certainly characterizes ceramics, the absence of plastic deformation. But how do you do that? How do you actually go about testing a ceramic in um, to, to create this curve, right? How, um, how to create stress versus strain? I mean... Why do we do that? Because we want to determine, we want to know what the strength is here. What's this, this fracture strength? And I mean, that's important to us when we're designing the ceramics. What, what's this Young's modulus? Uh, what's the value of it for a ceramic? How do we do that? And of course, well, for a, um, for a, a metal or even a polymer, we can, we can make a little specimen that looks like this, a tensile specimen. But that's a special shape. You know, maybe it's rectangular cross section. Maybe it's, uh, you know, it could be a, uh, sorry, it could be a cylindrical cross section. But the point remains, this is, it's, a, it's difficult to form this shape. How do you make one of those uh, out of a metal? We usually start with a rectangular piece of metal and, and then you machine it, you cut away some of that material uh, um, <clears throat> in order to form the shape. But ceramics, particularly, are, are difficult to machine. Why? Well, because they're very hard. They're hard, high strength. OK, so they wear away your, your bits, your uh, tool bits. Bits become dull, I'll say. That means you need to sharpen them regularly or replace them. That can be costly. Um, they also tend to crack when you're machining them. They're intolerant of damage, and so they tend to break, and that uh, makes it difficult to do. So you, you're really after some kind of a simple geometry, if you can, to test um, to test a, a ceramic. So we'd like to have some kind of a simple geometry, and there's different ways you can do this, but one fairly simple geometry that's easy to test is a rectangular cross-section beam like this. And in fact, even just, just when I say the word beam, it imply, it, it indicates the mode of loading. So if, you, if I draw a couple of little supports here, that's what these are meant to be, little point supports, and I position my beam, I'm just trying to cross-section here, across that, and then load it in the middle by some force. That's <clears throat> one point two, three points of contact with the beam. And so we actually call that three-point bending. And it's easy to manufacture a little rectangular cross-section beam. Even if you have a high-strength uh, ceramic, you can cut them relatively easily with a diamond saw, with enough coolant and everything. Um, so they can be formed. It's relatively simple geometry, I mean, especially compared to one of these dog bone specimens here we have for tensile testing that's more complicated. So we have this nice simple geometry 
and you just uh, you know you can just load it um, or support it on a couple of spots and then load it in the middle. Um, <clears throat> of course, one of the problems though that uh, you you may be familiar with is is well there's a, a neutral axis running through this sample. The, the along that neutral axis, the the stress is zero, and you may you could even you can you can describe why that's the case really quickly right now. We say, well, if the top surface is being squished or being pushed down, it's being compressed. The material is, is being pushed closer together, and the lower surface is being elongated. It's being pulled in tension. You can imagine if you had paint on both surfaces, you'd expect to see cracks forming on the lower surface of the beam if it was painted with a brittle paint. So if the top is in compression, the lower surface is in tension, that they're completely opposite, positive and negative, and so it has to cross through zero in the middle, and we have a profile of stresses through the thickness. Of stress um, through or as a function of the thickness. So we can't just go and take some you know arbitrary cross-sectional area or something and take our force divided by that area. We have to solve for the stress that's causing failure. So again, back up here, what we're trying to do is you know, work out what this fracture strength is. So where does fracture occur? Well, ceramics, um, as you may intuitively know, and we can explore in a later video, are poor in, ten in, in tension. So ceramics, poor in tension, that's, they'll, they'll, that's where they'll fail. So what we want is we want to determine what the tensile stress is, particularly the highest tensile stress. And in this loading configuration, the highest tensile stress will occur in the um, right here in the middle of the beam underneath where the load is applied. Highest stress. And so the, the equation for that highest stress on the lower surface of the beam in three-point bending is three halves um, F L over uh, B D squared, and I realize I didn't introduce some of these terms, so let me do that right now. <clears throat> F um, F is the force I've defined up there. The span from one uh, lower support to the other is L. Okay, the beam itself, if it's a rectangular cross-section beam has a height or depth of D and a width of B. Okay, so that's our equation for three-point bending of a rectangular cross-section beam.